Hello everyone, welcome back to my Ant Tribe Diary. Today I have a special update, sharing my two six-day-old colony of bicolor leafcutter ants. You may have heard of these ants, known for their unique leaf-cutting behavior. However, have you ever wondered how this behavior impacts their lifestyle? During the time I've been keeping them, they haven't shown any leaf-cutting behavior. What's the reason behind this? In today's video, we'll unravel this mystery. These ants are relatively small and slow-moving, typically living in subtropical environments, where they gather sweets and small insect carcasses. However, under the conditions I've provided them, their growth hasn't been as rapid as I'd hoped. So, how have they adapted to this situation, and what is their potential for growth? Let's explore. As their name suggests, the bicolor leafcutter ants, with their vibrant red fronts and dark black abdomens, are strikingly attractive especially their signature heart-shaped abdomens. The queen's abdomen, however, is shaped more like a kiwi fruit. Their adorable appearance makes them ideal pets for many ant enthusiasts. Compared to other ant species, they move much more slowly, earning them the nickname Slow Motion Guys. Unlike other ant species, the bicolor leafcutter ants are exceptionally quiet, seldom disturbed by outside forces, and largely independent unlike other ants who are nervous. This is precisely their appeal, they are a low-maintenance species. Despite their relatively slow reproduction rate, worker mortality is remarkably low. Perhaps their temperament allows them to better adapt and maintain vitality during their resting years. These ants have a high reproductive capacity, expanding from a queen to hundreds of workers each year. They are not only adaptable to low humidity, but can also survive up to 30% humidity, making them well-suited to warm, dry environments. Despite providing them with a suitable environment and regularly supplementing their nutrition with sugar, water, and small insects over the past 20 days, their colony hasn't grown as rapidly as I'd hoped. A brief inspection revealed a number of ant eggs within their nests. While their numbers were small, the small black dots within them showed promise potentially future worker ants. Strangely, though these eggs had already hatched into the embryonic forms of small workers, actual workers had yet to emerge. Perhaps their living environment, diet, or nature slowed their reproduction. After all, they don't expand as rapidly as other ant species. This raises the question, why haven't they produced new workers yet? However, this doesn't mean they're completely unproductive. During my observations, I found that these young ants seem to be adapting well to the in vitro fertilization environment. The nests showed no adverse changes, and no worker deaths occurred. This may be the key to their ability to successfully navigate this adaptation period. Although this colony's growth rate was slow, the lack of worker deaths made it relatively healthy compared to other ant colonies. During my care, regular feeding with sugar water and small insects has generally met their growth needs. However, I still have some concerns as the growth of the bicolor leafcutter ants is much slower than that of other camptostomes, especially during the initial stages of environmental change. In my care of the bicolor leafcutter ants, I've also noticed that their acclimatization period is particularly important. This period is much longer than for other ants, sometimes taking over a week to fully adapt to their new environment and begin moving. This may also be part of their personality reflecting their tendency to take things slowly and proceed step by step. Although this colony is currently small, with only a few dozen workers, I believe it will grow over time. Once they adapt to their new environment and begin reproducing new workers, I anticipate their numbers will increase rapidly, forming a larger colony. In the future, I plan to establish a larger area for them to roam. Once their first batch of workers reaches around 100, I'll consider moving them into a larger nest allowing them to continue expanding and reproducing in a more comfortable environment. This not only allows them to move more freely, but also promotes better cooperation and reproduction. That's all for today. My growth record and future prospects for my bicolored shield-breasted leafcutter ants. Although progress has been slow at this time, I remain confident that over time, this tribe will become a large ant family. If you enjoy observing the microscopic world of ants, or if you like me, love raising ants, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your own ant raising experiences. Do you have similar questions or suggestions? Leave a comment in the comments. See you next time.